Welcome to Electron Online, and now for the big question, how is electromagnetic radiation produced? And it turns out there's various ways, but one of the main ways in which it's produced is due to the thermal energy of matter. And let me explain. Let's take our brick again. And so when we take a closer look at our brick, we can see that our brick is made up of atoms. And if we take a closer look of an atom, it looks like here a nucleus with electrons around it. Remember, the nucleus contains protons and neutrons, and the negative charged electrons are, are around it. And if we now take a look at its nucleus right here, it will fill, it is filled with an, a number of positive charges called protons. And because of those protons, we will have an electric field that emanates away from the nucleus of the atom. Now, how is that related to in M waves? Well, electromagnetic waves, of course, have to do with electromagnetic radiation, and that comes from the electric field and the magnetic field that's produced when, the mo when there is a motion with those charges, and we'll get into that in just a little bit. But let's go back and understand why there's this connection here between this and electromagnetic radiation. Well, first of all, an object will be at a particular temperature. You could take a thermometer, touch an object with it, and measure the temperature of that object. Well, what does that mean? Why does an object have a certain temperature? Well, it turns out you can add heat to an object or take heat away from an object. Heat is a form of energy. So by adding heat to an object, you make the, you make the temperature of the object go up, and if you take heat away from an object, you make the temperature of the object go down. Well, how do you heat something up? Well, we could maybe put on a stove, put a flame underneath it, and the flame will then add heat to the object and it heats it up. So most of us understand how things can be heated up. And if you want to cool them down, you take them into you put them in a refrigerator and the refrigerator will then absorb the heat from the object and the temperature of the object will go down. So we have a fairly good understanding of that, but we don't quite know why an object will increase its temperature and how will it decrease its temperature and how does it contain the heat? So we put heat into an object and how does it contain the heat? Well, it turns out it does that through the, through the vibrations of the atoms in the object. If you add heat to an object, the atoms in the objects will begin to vibrate more violently, higher frequencies, they will vibrate more quickly, and because of that, they contain the heat by simply the vibrational motion of the object, of the atoms in the object. And if you cool an object down, then the vibration will slow down. So the temperature is proportional to the vibration of the atoms in the object, add more heat, vibrations go up, become uh, higher in frequency and therefore the object becomes warmer. If you cool the object down, you take heat out of it, the vibrations slow down and therefore the temperature of the object goes down as well. So now you can see that the vibrational frequencies of the atoms in the object depend upon the temperature of the object. So what would be the lowest temperature an object can be? Well, at the lowest temperature possible, which is absolute zero in Kelvin degrees, then all motion stops, in other words, the vibrational motion stops in an object. You will still have quantum mechanic motion, but you will no longer have vibrational motion, so there's no longer any heat contained in the object. Of course, the laws of thermodynamics tell us that we cannot possibly remove every last bit of heat of an object. There will always be some left in there, but in other words, you cannot reach absolute zero temperatures. We can get close, but we can't actually reach it. Those are laws of thermodynamics. But again, the bottom line is, the more heat you put an object, the faster the atoms vibrate. Now, what does that have to do with electromagnetic radiation? Well, it turns out, when you have a charged object, like the nucleus of an atom, there will be an electric field around the atom. We use a symbol E with a little arrow on top to denote an electric field. And that electric field has an influence on the space around it, and it goes out to infinity. Just like the gravitational effect, the electric effect will go out really to an, uh, a distance of infinity, of course, it gets weaker and weaker and weaker as you go farther away. The intensity of the electric field diminishes, just like the gravitational field, as one over the distance squared. So if you double the distance, you only have one quarter the intensity. You triple the distance, one ninth of the intensity, and so forth. So the strength of the field does drop off over distance. Now, imagine now that we have a charged object right here that has an electric field all around it, and we look at one electric field line that goes out here to the observer. The observer can see that there's an electric field line there, so there's an influence of this charge right at this location here. What happens now if we take this object and we move it upward? So we move the object upward. What happens to the field? Well, the field moves up with it. Now, does the entire field move up with it at the same time? Actually, it doesn't. So as we move it up, this field will move up with it and the influence will move outward at the speed of light. 
So we move this up and the electric field moves up, but of course it takes a while before this takes an effect. So we move this up and the whole field will then rearrange itself and get into this position because it takes time for that influence to move all the way out here because there's a, lima, a, a, a finite limit to the speed of light and so therefore it takes a while before this effect is felt downrange so to speak. Eventually the whole field will come up and you can see that this will then eventually all look like this. And then if we take the object and we move it down over here, so first we move it up, now we move it down, we move it down here, the whole field will come down with it, but again it takes time for the field that change to be felt all the way around. What does the person at the very end see? Well, at the very end, if we just keep this object going up and down, up and down, up and down like that, eventually the person at the end will see the field go up and go down and go up and go down in, a, in an effect that follows the movement over here. In effect, what the person then sees over here is a wave motion. That is a wave motion of the electric magnetic radiation by moving this thing up and down. So what we're realizing now is that when a charged object vibrates back and forth, just like all the atoms in, a, in an object are vibrating up and down or in all different directions, so to speak, because of the thermal action, because of the heat contained within the object. And since that all those nuclei of atoms have electric fields around them, it causes those fields to bounce around like that, which causes the effects to be felt in all directions. And that is, in essence, the emanation of electromagnetic radiation. So we have an object with all the atoms in the object vibrating back and forth. The hotter it is, the faster they vibrate, the cooler it is, the slower they vibrate, and then the electromagnetic radiation vibrates along with it because of the motion of the charges, and the rate at which the, vibra the, rate at which the objects, the atoms in the object vibrate back and forth is the rate at which the electric field emanates and moves like that away from the object, and so the frequency of the radiation equals the frequency of the vibration of the atoms in the object. Now, that means that if an object gets hotter and hotter and hotter, eventually the frequency of vibration of the atoms in the object becomes so, so high that they will begin to emanate visible light. For example, if you take a piece of metal and you put it in the fire, it gets hotter and hotter. And if you really stoke the fire, the metal gets hotter and hotter. And eventually, the metal begins to glow. It glows this reddish color. And if you make it even hotter, it begins to glow in an orangey color. And if you make it even hotter, like in a steel mill where, they're, where they melt steel, you actually see the metal become whitish hot, white hot, because then it shows all the various colors of the rainbow together, which gives it that whitish color. So the hotter it gets, the more the colors of the rainbow get seen. And of course, initially it's red, then it's orange, it's kind of yellowish, and it becomes white. And then, of course, it, it eventually if it gets hot enough, it will actually have a bluish color to it. So I don't think we ever make metal quite that hot where it shines blue. But again, the color or the frequency of, of, the, of the radiation coming from the object simply depend on the frequency of the vibration of the atoms which depend on the temperature of the object. So now here's an interesting question. So not only do we have radiation from all objects in the world or in the universe, because all objects in the universe have atoms and they all will vibrate if they're not at absolute zero. And since nothing in the universe is absolute zero, everything in the universe will vibrate. So we have radiation coming from everything. Not only that is, the amount of radiation and the kind of radiation we get from the objects do depend upon the temperature of the object, which is a kind of an interesting connection. We can actually tell what the temperature of objects are by looking at their frequency of their vibrations and the kind of electromagnetic radiation that they emanate. So there's a very nice connection there. So now you know what produces and how electromagnetic radiation is produced. Everything in the universe produces it, and it does so because of the vibrational frequencies of the atoms inside the objects. Now there's still a second way in which electromagnetic radiation get produced, but that is for a different video.